In this presentation, an intraarticular fracture of the distal tibia will be reduced and stabilized. Using the large external fixator in an ankle bridging delta frame. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for the application of a large external fixator, the positioning and correct insertion of the shunt screws, and the construction of ankle bridging delta frame. The most common clinical indications for the application of the ankle bridging delta frame include intraarticular fractures of the distal tibia with severe soft tissue damage, either open or closed, including complex fractures of the distal tibia. For damage control surgery in polytrauma patients, and for acute and chronic infections in both fractures and non-unions about the ankle. The instruments needed are the compact air drive, the quick coupling, the drive adapters for 4 mm and for 5 mm shunt screws, the 3.5 mm drill bit, Two 5 mm diameter self drilling shunt screws, 125 mm long with a thread length of 40 mm, which will be inserted into the tibia. Two 4 mm diameter self drilling shunt screws, 150 mm long with a thread length of 40 mm, which may be inserted into the first and fifth metatarsals. And a Steinmann pin. 5 mm in diameter and 250 mm long, which will be inserted through the calcaneus. Also needed is the drill sleeve assembly. It includes the handle for drill sleeves, the short 6.0-5.0 threaded drill sleeve, the short 5.0-3.5 drill sleeve, and the short 3.5 trocar. The universal chuck with T-handle may also be used to advance the shunt screws. Needed for the construction of the ankle bridging delta frame are seven large MR-safe open adjustable clamps and two 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rods. In this case, 300 and 350 millimeter long rods are needed. Required to tighten the frame assembly are the 11 millimeter cannulated socket wrench and the 11 millimeter combination wrench. The zones through which the shunt screws can safely be inserted into the tibial shaft, the distal tibia, and the midfoot are shown in this illustration. The bone model is secured in the clamp. The drill sleeve assembly is placed directly onto the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. The first shunt screw should be positioned about one centimeter medial to the tibial crest in the mid-sagittal plane. The trocar is removed. And since self-drilling, self-tapping shunt screws are used, the drill sleeve also is removed. A shunt screw is inserted into the adapter. The power drive is used to advance this first self-drilling shunt screw through the outer drill sleeve. The drill sleeve is positioned to ensure purchase of the shunt screw in both the lateral and the medial cortex. In the clinical situation, irrigation is recommended while inserting the shunt screws. The image intensifier can be used to check the final position of the shunt screws. The tip of the self-drilling shunt screws must be anchored in the far cortex to ensure stable fixation. Penetration of the far cortex is not necessary. Once a shunt screw has been placed, 
it's released from the adapter, and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. A centrally threaded Steinmann pin will now be inserted into the calcaneus. Once again, the drill sleeve assembly is inserted directly onto the bone surface, and the trocar is removed. The pin should be positioned in the posterior plantar aspect of the calcaneal tuberosity. Using the 3.5 mm drill bit, a pilot hole is drilled from medial to lateral. The drill guide is removed and the Steinmann pin is inserted with the power drive. After the Steinmann pin has been correctly placed, it's released from the power drive and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. One large MR-safe combination clamp is connected to the shunt screw in the tibia and one clamp is attached medially to the Steinmann pin in the calcaneus. An 11 mm carbon fiber rod, placed medially, is now snapped into place in both clamps. The clamps are initially tightened by hand. A second MR safe combination clamp is connected to the tibial shunt screw. A clamp is also attached laterally to the calcaneal Steinmann pin. A second carbon fiber rod, this time spanning the lateral aspect of the ankle, is snapped into place in the combination clamps. Once again, the clamps are first tightened by hand. The fracture is reduced. While the reduction is maintained, the clamps are provisionally tightened with the socket wrench. And final tightening is done with the combination wrench. An additional combination clamp is attached to the medial carbon fiber rod. This clamp will function as a guide for the drill sleeve assembly, while another distal shunt screw is inserted into the tibia. Once the drill sleeve assembly is positioned correctly, the clamp is secured by tightening it by hand. The trocar and drill sleeve are removed. The second shunt screw is advanced with the power drive in the same manner as the first. After the shunt screw has been inserted, it's released from the power drive and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. The clamp is initially secured by hand. It is provisionally tightened with the socket wrench. Final tightening is completed with the combination wrench. After attaching an additional clamp to the medial carbon fiber rod, a 4 mm shunt screw is inserted into the first metatarsal using the previously demonstrated technique. The shunt screw is introduced using the combination clamp as a guide and will assist in keeping the ankle from equinus. The shunt screw is released from the clamp to allow the removal of the drill sleeve assembly. It is then snapped back into place, and the clamp is first secured by hand, provisionally tightened with the socket wrench, and definitively tightened with the combination wrench.
On the lateral aspect, a four millimeter shunt screw is inserted into the fifth metatarsal and connected using the same technique. The ankle bridging delta frame is now complete. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications, the positioning and correct insertion of the shunt screws, and the construction of the ankle bridging delta frame.